How can you claim a 6,000-year-old Earth when carbon-14 results are coming back 50,000 years? Uh, the 6,000-year-old Earth actually comes from the historical record of the Bible. Carbon dating does produce ages typically around 50,000 years, say, but when we take into account things like the decay in the Earth's magnetic field, which means that more and more carbon-14 is being produced today than was in the past, and when we take into account the effects of the flood, which would have dramatically changed the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, then we find that those 50,000-year dates actually contract back to around the time of the flood. Boy, creationists hate carbon dating. I wonder why. Everything he just said is utter nonsense. Let me explain to you how carbon dating works. Carbon-14 is an isotope of isotope of carbon that is created with cosmic rays. They hit nitrogen in the atmosphere, and that nitrogen eventually breaks down into carbon-14. Carbon-12 is the, the regular form of carbon that is most abundant in nature. So there's a certain ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere. Living things breathe in that carbon, incorporate it into their structure, right? So when something dies, it should have the same ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 as in the atmosphere at the time. And then carbon-14 degrades into carbon-12, right? It radioactively decays into carbon-12. And so the ratio changes. So if you know the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the atmosphere, you know the ratio in a sample, you can say how old that organic sample is. It works to about 50,000 years, at which point all the carbon-14 would have degraded into carbon-12 and you can't, you no longer have a, a way to date it. So what creationists say is, well, how do we know that the amount of carbon-14 is stable over time and it changes by the magnetic field and everything? It's like, yeah, sure, that is true because the magnetic field protects the Earth from cosmic rays. More, a stronger magnetic field, fewer cosmic rays hitting nitrogen, making carbon-14, less carbon-14. Therefore, a sample would look um, younger if you had a weaker magnetic field and, and uh, would look older if you had a stronger magnetic field because there would be less carbon-14 to begin with. Um, but here's the thing. Scientists know this. Scientists, the scientists don't just make assumptions about how much carbon-14 there was in the atmosphere, in, historically speaking. They calibrate it to independent lines of evidence. Let me name two very important ones for you. One is dendrochronology. That is tree ring data, right? So we could look at tree rings and we could tell which year a ring of a tree al uh, equals, aligns with because of just historical data. We know how, you know, how much moisture and how warm and whatever the summers were, how much growth there was that year. And we can look at multiple different trees and we could line up the rings and we could essentially construct a chronology out of tree rings by piecing together the different, you know, trees, basically hundreds of years old, some thousands of years old. We have a continuous dendrochronology of tree rings back to about 13, almost 14,000 thousand years. That's older than they say the, the life on Earth is, or the Earth is, depending on what formulation you're using. It's certainly older than 6,000 years, more than twice as old. Now, what does that enable us to do? That enables us to calibrate our carbon-14 dating, because now we could know exactly how old a sample is through dendrochronology, and then we could carbon-14 data, and that gives us a calibration. Now we know what the, what the original carbon-14 was in the atmosphere of the year of that of that tree ring. We also um, can measure the magnetic field of in the past, right? Archaeomagnetism. We could do that. One thing, for example, is with pottery. We could look at the, you know, the iron and pottery and we could use that to see how strong the magnetic field was. So we could then independently say, well, the magnetic field was stronger at this time. Therefore, there would have been less carbon-14 in the atmosphere, etc. So there's two different ways to independently calibrate our carbon-14 dating. We're not making any assumptions there. Scientists have it pretty much dialed in. And the, the challenge stands with various dating methods. Also, these aren't the only two dating methods. With various dating methods, the Earth and life on Earth is much older than 6,000 years old. He cannot argue his way and hand wave his way out of that.